BeatGenerals.com. What's good, y'all? Welcome to the Beat Generals Fundamental Series. Uh, in this little three-part series, we're going to be showing you the thing that we at BeatGenerals.com see, you know, most new producers mess up on, most beginners mess up on, and even some interme intermediate-type producers uh, don't kind of really focus in on these things, and it just kind of uh, really makes their beats sound a little bit messed up, and uh, it just doesn't sound very professional. So uh, in this little three-part series, we'll be just showing you the little mistakes that we see and uh, hopefully help some of you guys out. So this is not aimed at more advanced or you know upper level type producers it's more aimed at the beginner and stuff so if you've been producing a while these are things you should already know uh, so let's jump right into it so the first thing that i want to talk about is you know obviously these days trap beats are still super popular you hear everybody on trap beats you know from kanye west to drake to everybody everybody and they're easy beats to sell easy beats kind of to make usually uh, unless you get super complicated with it uh but a lot of people make them and one thing that you always hear people mess up on obviously the center of a trap beat usually is going to be that drum pattern that 808 you know you need that heavy lex luger type 808 to really make a dope trap beat uh so people get that and they get an 808 and they're super excited to use these 808s and whatnot when they're starting out that they don't really notice a couple things so uh, i want to just cover those real quick right here we have t8082 this is from our premium t-minus kit here's what this sounds like Okay, this is just a mean type 808. So uh, what people fail to do with their 808s is tune them. So what I mean by tune them is, you know, they'll just play C or whatever and then, you know, go up a note, do, you know, a weird little trap pattern, whatever the case may be. You know, and they'll do this kind of thing. And uh, maybe, and this is C, uh, C, uh, C minor scale. Uh, and what happens is they they have, you know, their instruments and everything in C minor and they think, okay, so I can just play the C and, you know, play whatever else of the scale with this 808 and this will be in key. Well, the truth is most 808s that you get from these kits are not going to be, you know, at C. They're going to be a different note. So if you're playing a C with this, this is not actually playing a C. So the way to confirm that it is and to make sure you're covered on that is you want to right click your 808, whichever 808 you're using. You want to come over here to this little tab in Edison and you want to click detect pitch regions and it'll show you what the actual note is of that 808 the original note so you want to just come over here once you have the note which it tells you right over here g sharp you want to come over here and it actually even tells you the octave but you don't really have to worry about the octave since you can move your 808 up and down as you please in the piano roll um then you come over here and you find that key so c d e f g g sharp right and now when you play this, the C is actually going to be playing a C and so on and so forth. So you actually have the correct mapping of these keys. Okay, so that's one way to do this. And another thing that you want to uh, just kind of pay attention to is make sure that your stuff is always on cut itself, your 808. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll hear a lot of distortion when, when the sounds bleed kind of into each other. You see that little wah wah type, you know, effect when things start bleeding. It just doesn't sound good. So uh, always make sure it's on cut itself. Uh, now another little thing you can do, which I prefer to use, is a VST in FL Studio called Direct Wave. And what Direct Wave allows you to do is it lets you import sounds into here, right? So I can just drag this 808 into here. Uh, now once I actually have this 808 in here, oh, let me just make sure it's on the same effects channel, just so we can hear it better. Uh, once I have the actual 808 in direct wave, you just want to right click and click find pitch root. Now it will automatically find the root note of this right for you. And if you look at it, it actually found G sharp again. So uh, what you can do is transfer your pattern to here. And this is probably going to be a lot lower than this one because it'll, it'll actually take it to G sharp with the second octave. So actually a lot higher. Okay, so let's go ahead and just move this down a little bit. And I'll show you guys why I prefer to use uh, direct wave okay so on direct wave you don't have to right click and click cut itself or anything like that you can if you want to but you don't have to uh the cool thing about direct wave is that it'll automatically cut off notes where you you know left them or where, where you kind of cut them off so you'll hear little spaces which allows you to kind of create a better bounce to your tracks and some that's very popular you hear boy wonder vinyls a lot a lot of people do these kind of 808s that kind of leave a little bit more of a breathy kind of open uh pattern so this is a lot easier to do in here
Okay, uh, so that's pretty much it. These are the two methods you can always uh, use to guarantee that your sounds are going to be in um, pitch. And this is also cool for like little sample sounds. If you want to use, I don't know, like a door open sound or whatever kind of sound you have that's kind of weird, a snare, a kick, um, a percussion sound or whatever. And you want to make sure it's in key. Just drag into direct wave. Uh, and find pitch root and it'll just automatically do all the work for you. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned something new. If you want more tips, tricks, tutorials, downloads, all that, you can head over to www.bjones.com now. Uh, stay tuned for part two. Until next time, bjones.com.